I am Julia Byrne. I am presenting research with Ruba Abu Salma and Alyssa Frick on the perspectives of nannies on smart home surveillance um, as a case study of bystander privacy. Uh, so to the extent that smart home devices are designed for privacy at all, it's the privacy of the end user who chose to install the device. Uh, but of course, IoT devices collect data on a whole environment, uh, including other people in the situation. And that can include people who may be targeted for surveillance by the devices, such as children. Um, and it can also include others who aren't targeted, but are simply bystanders, such as guests. Um, taken together, we'll call those two groups non-primary users. Um, it's well established in the literature that new technologies affect different people's privacy differently, depending on socioeconomic factors. And there's been a good bit of work on that um, in the past decade, specifically with respect to the Internet of Things. Um, and so what can we do about all that? Um, our long-term goal is to identify ways to empower non-primary users to have better control over their data. Um, to reach that goal, we need data and stories from people who are likely to be bystanders to or targets of IoT data collection. And we're focusing on smart homes. Um, our first case study is with domestic childcare workers um, and with parents who employ such workers, exploring their perspectives and experiences. Um, nannies are an interesting case in part because they can either be targets of intentional surveillance by their employers, or they can be bystanders to devices that happen to be there for other reasons. Um, for our research questions, uh, first of all, we want to explore nannies' experiences with being observed and recorded by smart home devices um, that they didn't choose to deploy, um, and we want to see what their privacy attitudes, expectations, and concerns are about those devices. Uh, next, care work in the home brings together multiple contexts. Um, for the parents, it's their home where they're used to having more control over what happens. Um, for the nanny, it's their workplace, so there's financial considerations, um, but also certain expectations about professional boundaries. Um, on the other hand, it's a care context where they're caring for a vulnerable child um, that can affect the balance between safety concerns and privacy rights. So we're interested in how the potentially conflicting norms about data collection and use for those three contexts um, affect each party's expectations and attitudes and choices. Um, next, we're really interested in how these type of technologies can interact with power dynamics, um, how control of the technology might reflect existing dynamics, um, and how the technology might reinforce or change dynamics. Um, so in any smart home situation, there's going to be asymmetries of knowledge and control between the person who decides to install the device and other people. Um, but here they may align with a whole different set of power asymmetries related to uh, socioeconomic positioning. Um, given all that, uh, we want to know if there are privacy related conflicts between nannies and parents, how are those conflicts negotiated? Um, and finally, we want to look for um, potential points of intervention for representing nannies' preferences about data being collected and shared about them, um, especially within interactions that nannies and employers have about the devices. Um, this is a two-side study. Between October and December 2019, we interviewed nannies, professional babysitters, and au pairs. Um, we also interviewed parents who employ nannies to get an idea of any potential misalignments in their opinions, attitudes, and preferences um, to check some of the nannies' assumptions. Uh, we designed the interview guides by reviewing academic literature on smart home user primary, perspective, primary user perspectives, um, reading content for and from nannies and other domestic workers, uh, such as online forums and blogs. Um, and so the interview topics included experiences with smart home devices in homes where nannies work, um, employer-employee interactions about devices, general privacy expectations, preferences, and concerns, um, and also legal and technical protections. Um, but the bulk of the interview time was usually given to cameras, but we also covered other devices. Um, we are currently conducting thematic analysis of the nanny interviews using a code book that the three authors developed collaboratively to code transcripts um, and identify common themes. We haven't started analyzing the parent interviews yet, so all the preliminary findings I'll be describing are from the nanny interviews. Um, to obtain a more diverse set of opinions, we're also collaborating with colleagues in the UK and Germany to conduct studies there in addition to the US, um, but I'll just talk about the US data here. Uh, we recruited our participants by posting and distributing flyers locally in the Bay Area, um, posting online, for example, Reddit and Facebook groups, uh, using the research crowdsourcing platform Prolific, uh, just for the parent side, and via referrals to other potential participants. Uh, we interviewed 26 domestic child care professionals, mostly in nanny or nanny plus household manager positions. Um, all of them were female, uh, which reflects the demographics of the field. It's 97% female, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. 
we also interviewed 16 parents who employ nannies and who have devices in their homes that could potentially be used for surveillance. Um, a note on the limitations of the study, the main limitation is that recruitment interviews being in English, uh, which means that we may not have captured uh, issues particular to, say, recent immigrants who aren't yet comfortable in, dom in the dominant language. Um, so now I'll give a, a review of our high-level findings. Again, note that these findings are just preliminary based on initial analysis. Um, so the interviews focused mainly on smart home devices that are designed and marketed primarily for surveillance, um, usually involving cameras like um, home security systems or internet-enabled baby monitors. Um, so with regard to the cameras, um, some nannies who've had experience with cameras believe that they themselves, or at least their interactions with the children, were the primary targets of the data collection. Um, other nannies have more been bystanders to cameras that they believed were deployed for other purposes, um, such as security from intruders or monitoring pets or feeling connected to the children while the parents are away at work. Uh, and mostly, I'm not going to talk about the parents' interviews, um, but I will say that indeed, some said they had gotten cameras specifically to observe their nannies, and some had them for other reasons. Um, for other types of devices like smart speakers and smart TVs, nannies generally viewed themselves as bystanders. Um, so you'll notice the implicit threat model here is focused on whether the employers are viewing or listening to the data and how they use the information. Um, of course, for many of the devices, service providers are also collecting and monitoring data, um, but that data collection uh, is a secondary concern for most of our participants, if they even thought about it at all. Um, overall, nannies had fewer privacy concerns about devices that their employers weren't likely to use for surveillance. Um, employers reviewing the Alexa queries is relatively unlikely to impact nannies' day-to-day -day job experience or job security. Um, so I'm not going to focus on those devices today since uh, we aren't seeing as clear of patterns yet until we've done more analysis. Um, with respect to the cameras, most of our nanny participants viewed in-home cameras as relatively common, even to some degree um, expected. But nearly all the participants believe that employers should inform nannies about cameras. Um, lack of disclosure could be viewed as a breach of trust or signaling a lack of respect. Uh, the nannies we interviewed had a broad range of positive and negative attitudes toward the use of cameras, but those attitudes were generally pretty nuanced, um, situationally dependent. For example, many nannies expressed more concern about devices capturing information about their private lives or behaviors like changing clothes or talking on the phone with friends um, than to their professional childcare activities. Um, some participants mentioned potential benefits of cameras, at least when we asked whether cameras have benefits, um, such as protection against wrongful accusations, uh, physical safety, facilitating communication with their employers about childcare, and so forth. Um, the purpose of the camera tended to be a major factor in Nanny's views. Um, at a high level, it could depend on whether they believed that the primary purpose of having the camera was to monitor the nanny or whether it was primarily for other purposes like home security or feeling connected with the kids. Um, but there's a lot of variation um, even for cameras that are there to check on the nanny. So for example, uh, a number of participants drew distinctions between um, occasional spot checks for parental peace of mind just to make sure that the nannies weren't abusing their charges. Um, versus parents constantly watching and critiquing small details of how the nannies did their jobs. Uh, transparency about purposes is a concern for some nannies, uh, especially uh, in some cases where they suspected that cameras that were supposedly installed for home security might actually uh, be being used to monitor and spy on them. Um, participants often framed their concerns about the purposes of cameras in terms of the dynamics of their relationships with their employers. Um, so, for example, constantly uh, checking cameras and using the data to micromanage care could be seen as a sign of mistrust or disrespect on the parent's part. Um, but then, on the other hand, um, some participants made assumptions about the purposes of cameras and whether their employers had basically good intentions about using them um, based on whether they otherwise had a good relationship. Uh, although many nannies expressed privacy concerns and feelings of discomfort about surveillance, uh, many said that they deferred to parents' decisions, uh, not only about installing smart, um, smart home devices, but uh, about their choice, choices about where to put them, about data collection and processing, um, configuration of settings. The power dynamic was expressed in a few different ways, um, that homeowners have a right, or they feel they have a right, to choose what devices to install and how to use them, um, that parents have a right to protect their children's safety or keep tabs on the children when they're not at home, um, and that employers are free to set the rules and conditions of employment, um, and employees might not be in a position to negotiate about it, um, for example, due to job security concerns. 
Um, so once we've completed our analysis of the interview data, we plan to compare the US data with the data from the parallel UK and Germany studies, uh, conduct surveys in multiple countries and multiple languages um, with both nannies and parents who employ nannies, uh, to quantify the prevalence of the themes we're observing in the qualitative studies and test the relationships between them. Um, part of, as part of the broader research program, um, we hope to conduct additional case studies with other groups of smart home bystanders, um, including caregivers for older adults, uh, house cleaners or in-home maintenance workers, uh, groups or organizations that hold in-home meetings and residents of um, pre-equipped smart housing. Finally, we hope to conduct research with uh, designers, developers, and manufacturers of smart home devices to understand their mental models and expectations about uh, the non-primary users of the devices, up to the, uh, if they consider non-primary users at all. Um, and then based on all those findings, we plan to uh, develop conversation guides to facilitate discussion of privacy and data use between smart home device owners and uh, surveillance targets and bystanders. Uh, to work with domestic employment agencies and professional associations to develop um, and disseminate informational materials and recommendations for employers and employees. Um, develop guidelines and trainings for smart home product developers about the needs and expectations of non-primary users and develop recommendations for policymakers for including considerations about uh, bystanders privacy concerns in consumer privacy, uh, consumer protection regulations. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, if you want to get in touch or get a copy of the full paper, once the analysis is complete, please feel free to contact me.